from London, William Orbit and Polly Scattergood. <laughs> William Orbit and Polly Scattergood. A room full of amazing people, yes. Now we move on to my next guest. He's got Grammys, Ivan Novellos, he's produced Madonna, Blur, Robbie Williams and Kraft Rock. We welcome the extraordinary talent that is William Orbit. <laughs> it's very good to have you here. Um, and um, you're going to be choosing a bit of archive in a minute. Before we get to that, let's start. You've sold over 200 million records. That's a lot in anybody's by anybody's standards, and you've produced lots of amazing people who I was mentioning there earlier. What is the key to being a successful record producer? What is your job to do that? How do you do that? Okay. Make sure the tape recorder's running. Yeah. Very important. Do you still use a tape recorder? Well, we call it that. Yeah. It's digital. Red lights on. Yeah. The other one about being a good record producer is pick a good song. Yeah. That's it. The rest does itself. Well, working with the, the, the artists are good, so if the artists are good, you've got, it's, it makes it easier. <sighs> wow, that's a question. I mean, they're all good, in the, but sometimes they're struggling to get quite to this area of good they think they could be, we see they could be, and that's, that's the exciting bit. So they're good, but everybody's got room for improvement. And if I can just be a service in some small way. Yeah, exactly. And is people very receptive to your... Is Madonna very receptive, for instance, when you're working with her? She was. She was. I mean, we never argued, because we had the same common cause, as it were. I mean, musicians are funny people. <laughs> That's well spotted. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you've worked also in the spheres of classical music and light rock and roll music and light like blur and you two, all these different things. But do you approach, whether it's classical music, dance music or... Rock and roll, whatever it is, whatever the name of it is. Do you approach it in the same way? Yeah, or do you I have do. It yeah, structure is very important. You know, the, 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 the non-exciting bits, the, the quotidian bits of just nuts and boltsism, same applies to all types of music. And melody. Mm. Melody and arrangement. You know, the way the melodies are sat next to each other goes for any kind of music. Even if it's not ostensible. We like the most crass piece of techno, you know, hardcore. <laughs> I love all that. I love tech house. Yeah. Um, and when did you first realise that music was going to be your life? Whew. Well, I spent, uh, when I was about 11, I'd lie in bed and make up symphonies, and I thought everybody did that. And I didn't think about it after that very much, and to be honest, I wasn't, in, I wasn't a professional. In fact, it was our friend Miles Copeland. <laughs> I got a call who from Miles. Who managed me and who worked with you, Miles Copeland? We shared a manager. Called me up, and we were making these demos in a squat, and they sounded pretty, um, pretty left field, but he, he saw something, and... Then it was like I was age 23, suddenly a professional musician. No, and that was, uh, I don't want to do anything else now. I've done everything, I've done lots of other stuff. Did Not... you work in a brewery? I did. Where was that? Amsterdam. You worked in Amsterdam? On the night shift. And it was a rough old place, but it's a museum now. It's a museum, Harnikum Brewery in Amsterdam. Now, you've had a plunder through the archives. I'm delighted to have a run. an archive. And what was it like having a look through the archive? I'm still at M. <laughs> MLO, PQ, it's enormous, so I'm going to do it where to start, Jules. But um, I did see Amadou and Mariam, and they just make me happy. You, you've had, they just that, exactly, they lift you up, don't they? Lift, lift you up. Do you know, it's, it's, it's that guitar, it's that pure sunshine. Yeah, it lifts up. Yeah. So I, was, I was doing that when I was saying it was great, it lifts you up. That's what I was that sound. It lifts you up. Yeah, yeah. And it's, it's very tough times in Marley, you know, with music as well. We know what happened out there with music being suppressed mm. because of the uh, extremism. So fair play to them. How are we doing, Marion? Magosa. Now, you've got a new album out entitled The Painter. Are you a painter yourself? Oh, I am these days, yes. What sort of painting do you Oil, use? oil on canvas. Figurative painting, abstract painting? Uh, oof, good question. Um, allegorical. Lots of skeletons of robots and animals that are turning into robots. And um, flowers. I like... I'm, I'm not a painter as such. I don't have the words for them. I mean, I'm just, I like pretty things. Barclay stuff. Now, your new album has got a lot of amazing people collaborating yes. with you. Who have you got on the record? There's Katie Millower. There's Polly Scattergood, of course, who is going to be sitting right here yes. shortly. There's um, Lido Pimienta, amazing Colombian artist. Beth Orton. Um, goodness me, I'm going to have to forget some now. But anyway, you've got some fantastic people uh, with you. And you're going to be moving to Venice. Now, that's quite unusual. Have you been to Venice before? I am part Italian, but I've never got round to going to Venice. And I was in Austria, in the south of Austria, and it was a two-and-a-half-hour drive. And they said, why don't you go to see the Venice Biennale? 
thought, yeah, I'll go, but I can only see three pieces. I can't do a whole ton of stuff, I'll just get overwhelmed. So we hit Venice, first thing I do within about five seconds is fall in love with it, head over heels, first time. Secondly, we go for lunch and have wine. Well, the Italians start, <laughs> they carry on. So the Biennale, we only saw one picture. But, but that was great. <laughs> best picture I've ever best seen. Best picture I've ever seen. It seemed getting better. Give me another glass. Well, we've got a drink called Producer's Punch. When you're struggling with the drum sound, have another glass. But basically, I was there, and then within half an hour determined, I'm moving here because I want to do some painting. I wouldn't mind having a bit of a London break. Sorry to go on about it, but I'm excited. It's all new. I've got this place, and it's really right in the heart of the old city, and it's right by this old square, this medieval square. But out the back, the back door, is a door that opens directly onto the canal. So we can have a, people can come and visit me, and I have candles out lighting up this very dark. I'm coming. Side. Come on out, Jules. What are you going to do for us at the end of the show? This is a song with Polly. It's called Colours Colliding. It's a beautiful song. I've always loved this melody. So it was already in existence before I took it on board, this particular one. And I've been obsessed with it. And it's a bit one of those ones that sticks in your head. So, it's you know. It's earworm, do you? So you're going to have I, I, to I, it. I hate that term, but yeah. I'll take it back then. An ear serpent. Ear serpent. Well, that's, yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. An ear insect. Um, ear wig. Ear, ear wig. So thank you very much for joining us, the wonderful William Orbit. Great music and geniuses and producers and artists of our time.